Okay, we're still in Chapter 6, Overview of the Editing Concepts, and we're into Part 3 now. And here we're going to start talking about the use of Find and Replace. And in order to, to, you, to operate this scenario, make this scenario work, I'm going to open up the Component Table. And give it a minute to open up. You'll notice I've already got a filter built. It's a component name equals, so everything in my selected set is equals. You'll notice that I've got uh, some of these modified. And so what we want to cover is how can we take a look at this information. And we've got a lot of data here that is not populated. How can we come in here and populate this information? So what I'm going to do, um, once again, I kind of like best fit all columns. I'm going to move this over just a little bit because I want a little bit more room here. And I want to use this SIR phase obsolete because it's a column that is obsolete. And I want to use this just to explain this concept. So we're going to do a find and replace here. And what are we going to find? Well, right now there's nothing in this table to populate. So it's a null field. So I'm going to leave it as null. I'm going to put, I'm going to replace it with some new information. Okay, and so remember all it is right click. I brought up find and replace off the right click menu and it's on this column and I typed, I identified what I wanted to find, what I want to replace it with and I also have the capability, well I'll discuss this in a minute, and I can go through here and find each one of those instances. I can replace a single instance or I can replace all. Now. I want to show you that the only information that was replaced in here is that information that I had checked out. Those are the records I had checked out, therefore those are the only records that got modified. That is important for you to understand the concept that uh, find and replace works, works well, but you have to know how it's going to work. And it only works on that data that's checked out. So. We have some other options. You can match the case in exact match, and you can also do a loop search, but we won't be discussing those because they're very rarely ever used. Now, the other th option that I have, you know, we've got this local runoff class, and it says it's negligible. Well, I, you know, I don't like that. I, I would prefer something else. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do a find and replace, and I'm going to say where it is negligible negligible I'm going to replace it with and I could decide which one I want I'm going to say it's ponded and so I'm going to replace all with ponded and you'll mm -hmm. notice that those that are coming <clears throat> are all now ponded so I've been able to modify my data very quickly for a large set of information based off my checkout so I hope that explains how you can do a global assign on a single column using the find and replace. And keep in mind that you know this isn't really something I want to keep, so I'm going to come over here and I have the ability to discard all my changes since the last time was updated. Uh, I can also come in here and discard the changes in the selected trees. And you'll notice that it had removed just that one field that I was in. So if I come over here and I highlight those records, and then I come back and do a discard on the changes in the selected trees, using my oops button again, in theory, this will replace all of those edits that I just made. And there it was. Everything is back to normal. Okay, so I showed you cut, copy, paste both trees and rows, or trees and records. I also showed you the use of the find and the replace for a global assign on a particular column. And now what I want to do is I want to switch out my equals here. 
and I want to pull in my Cretes and my Garys. And so looking at uh, my data now, there's a next part that I want to look at is uh, the ability to do a global uh, paste. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort on our column and we've got these Cretes right here and we've got these Garys right here. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to check out the Garys. And you'll notice that because some of these Garys are in data mappings in which these Cretes are also appearing, these Cretes are also checked out. You have to be extremely careful about this because some of the editing functions will impact other uh, data records that you have checked out. So be very careful. Had I come in here and done a find and replace, as I did here uh, previously on a find and replace and I said show me everything that is uh, null and replace it with something else and I said replace all every one of these with an E would then be impacted by that replace so be very careful of that know what you've got checked out it's important now because I don't want these to be uh, modified I need to basically come in here and change my filter and I need to remove my cretes and say okay now I have filtered my selected set to only the Garys. A good case in point on when to use a um, um, I'm gonna open up all of these remember I can use a control plus now and it'll open up all these records and of course none of these records are uh, are all these records are null so this is going to be a prime example of how I can come in here and populate all of my Cretes. I'm going to do a control minus to close things back out <clears throat> and so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say I need to populate my crops and my first crop is going to be soybeans and my unit of measure is bushel and I'm going to say a non-irrigated yield of 60 bushels <clears throat> and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add a new row and I'm going to say corn and it's in bushel and it's at 125 and I'm going to add a new row and I'm going to say wheat and I want winter wheat and I'm going to say bushels. You see how easy this is? And we're going to say that this is a 50 bushel non irrigated. Now, I could come through here and type in all of this information. I'm going to end my edit. I could type in all of this information if I wanted to, uh, each for each individual one. Or I could just come in here and I can copy these selected rows. And then I can come up here and highlight this and I'm now in the parent table which is the component table and I'm going to go over to the table editor and I'm going to say paste the trees and rows inserting the new rows remember I could use the icon if I wanted to and down here in my status messages it says the paste it inserted five records into the component table contains three rows in each one of those records. Now I can come over here and I can open that up and lo and behold that Crete has got corn, soybeans, and wheat. That Crete's got corn, soybeans, and wheat. And so you'll notice, uh-oh, one thing I didn't do right is I should have I should have only highlighted those records that I didn't already have that information. So now I have to come through here and do a control click and a control click and go to the table editor and mark these selected rows for deletion. Now, had I come in here and only highlighted those records that did not have the data, then I would not have had to delete those existing. So that goes to show you how a global paste can populate a lot of records with the same information at a very short time. So I hope that gives you a good uh, 
preliminary or you know and editing concepts on uh, how we can use the find and replace, how we can use the uh, uh, global paste, and how we can use just the cut, copy, paste itself. As usual, if any questions on this, go look at the documentation online or fire up an IM session and uh, text me or um, send me an email. Going on to chapter seven now.